G'day everyone, it's Billy here from Gumby Young West Australia. Well, guys, I thought I'd show you my uh, recent addition to my beautiful garden. Uh, so, in the last few months, everyone I've uh, had a couple of snail farms. So, I've got actual, actually got some uh, bobtail lizards what live in my yard. And uh, I used to come across all these beautiful, I wouldn't say beautiful, but all these snails out local rubbish dumps and just in the last couple of months I thought you know why not bring uh, create a couple of snail farms for my for food for my bobtail lizards um, and uh, yeah so I just came up with this idea um, I actually put up a wanted ad in the town of Wajan saying wanted garden snails for, uh, for bobtail lizards I've got about probably, uh, I don't know, I'd say eight, eight to ten bobtails that live in my yard, guys. They've been in here for many years. Um, they actually breed, so they've had probably about four babies this year. And we'll go for a wander in a minute, see if we can find any. I've got some banana I'm going to give to my bobtails. I feed them all different types of things. I mean, there's plenty of food in my yard. So they uh, scavenge on insects, uh, vegetation uh dead mice etc um but anyway sometimes about once a week i'll give them a bit of a feed of um either um, banana or uh special uh bobtail meat um and snails i haven't really given that that many snails guys so but anyway as you can see what hundreds of uh snails and this is my snail farm i've created this is just made out of a uh, compost bin, this one, and this is an old rainwater tank. I've got heaps of these beautiful rainwater tanks, guys, but they're actually being used for future vegetable gardens. I've actually got a, saw my mate Dale the farmer. He's given me a beautiful um, little tank like this in the next few weeks for so I can create another snail farm. So basically I'll get rid of this compost bin here and just create another galvanized uh, tank snail farm so what I've got in these fellas is a hollow logs uh, wood and also sphagnum moss so sphagnum moss and also I feed them shell grit so I've got heaps and heaps of shell grit as you can see there's just fragments of shell grit laying on the surface they need the shell grit for calcium and I just feed them weeds. Um, I forget what this is called. I'll show you in a minute. This is the first time I put this in here the last few days. Um, I forget what it's called anyway. And just today, some nice banana skin. So at the moment, they're all basically sleeping. And they'll come out at night time. I think they're nocturnal. When it rains, they always come out the snails. So the, this one here is pretty well escape proof, the snails can't get out. I'm not too fussed guys if they get out because like I said the bobtails are going to get them. Uh, my yard is basically snail free so I've, I haven't really got any of these snails in my yard. I used to about 10 years ago but I think the bobtails got them all. But no doubt they will escape and uh, I'm not too fussed guys, you know it's just good food for my bobtails. And these are the type of snails what the French people eat and uh, or they eat in French restaurants and so forth. I forget the actual species name. But they're a common European snail. And this one here, just some pieces of wood for them to climb up. Um, a clay terracotta pot and a hollow log down the bottom. And sphagnum moss and some nice sand on the bottom. The only problem with the sag, uh, sphagnum moss, everyone, is it's so expensive. Like a little bag cost me $27 the other day. Anyway, they're pretty happy, so we'll go for a wander. And um, I won't feed them any snails if we come across a bobtail. We'll uh, just feed them a banana. Um, but anyway, that's my snail farm, guys. Basically for my bobtail, bobtail lizards. So there's a couple living under here, just under there, they'll come out and get that. They're actually, and there's that plant, I just can't remember what I was feeding the snails. 
produces a beautiful big flower, but it's never ever flowered this one. Probably because it's hidden from the sun. It'll flower one day. Oh, there you are guys, there's a few here. Look. Actually breeding. Breeding season right now, so those ones are breeding. So that's how they breed guys. The bobtail will latch on and uh, breed like that. So that male bobtail there with the yellowy type head is actually latched on to the female there. So they're pretty tame. They will So you don't need to feed them much guys. There's about four or five bobtails in this area. They actually live under my house. I've done plenty of bobtail videos. I've rescued heaps of bobtails that have been injured. I've rescued a bobtail once it was actually stuck in tar. During summer, the road had melted, and uh, and uh, the, the bobtail had probably been stuck in the tar for a, a week or two. It was literally covered in uh, head to toe in tar. So I, I spent a full day removing the tar using olive oil. So look, I'll put the link below to the video, guys. So you don't feed them a lot guys, they've only got tiny, tiny stomachs. Beautiful looking animal. Tens of thousands of these get run over on the roads every year, guys. They're so docile they'll lay on the road to heat up. They need the warm sun to get uh, to get their blood circulating. And they'll lay in the middle of the road and end up getting run over by cars. Alright, so we'll go on. Couple more areas. This one here. So those ones that we just saw down there, some of them live under here. chicken pen guys so I'm doing a tour of my garden this weekend Saturday with a beautiful native bush garden where I grow all my trees thousands of trees I grow all native grasses full of frogs and tadpoles and ponds beautiful fruit trees beautiful beautiful mushrooms and all different species of mushrooms growing in my yard Grow vegetables, grow fruit trees and so forth. Here's a homemade bobtail um, home that I've made out of a little tiny piece of a 44 gallon drum. I don't think any bobtails are living in there. Here's another one what I've just recently made, an old tyre. It's so just a new one. There's no bobtails living in this one at the moment. Under here is a really, really good bobtail habitat I've created out of our logs or dead trees, uh, branches and so forth. And there's a nice sheet of tin. So a big long sheet of uh, corrugated iron. And uh, it's covered in 
these are cuttings off my uh, bottle brush trees and so forth and it just makes it nice and cool for them I'll chuck one there heaps of bobtail habitats around my area guys so they just come out during the day go for a walk and so underneath that shooter tin there could be a bobtail Over here, this is where I'm planting my native irises today. What I found out the local rubbish dump. It could be a bobtail here. Oh, there's a. So I've got bobtail homes everywhere, guys, that I've just created. Hollow logs, there's one there. Here's a bobtail. And my dog. My dogs, or my dog Sophie, she knows not to touch them, and neither do my cats. I've got two cats, and they just leave them alone. So under this this big piece of uh, soil here, guys, is about probably three foot of soil. Three foot of soil that I've just built up with a to the left of those railway sleepers all along here and there's bobtail, a couple of bobtails what live under there so they'd probably live underneath this soil where it's nice and cool so I'm not too worried about snakes guys my, my yard is totally snake proof can't get any snakes in and it's uh, a lot of people think bobtail lizards keep snakes away they don't the bobtails will do nothing to snakes. So eating that banana guys, they could go without food for another month if they had to. So, yeah, it's a beautiful bobtail that one. And underneath these hay bales, is, I've created bobtail homes. This is another one I'm working on. So that one there will eventually be covered in all tree branches and so forth, like Melly Luca and so forth, just like I've done here. So I keep all my tree cuttings, guys. So I don't get rid of any, I don't take any tree cuttings out the local rubbish dump i keep everything for mulch compost and to create my little bobtail habitats so anyway guys i really appreciate you watching just a quick video on uh, my snail farm and my bobtail lizards what live in my yard so and I'll give you a tour of my garden in the next few days, probably on Saturday. It's another busy day today, everyone. Um, carting sand for landscaping, doing a bit of landscaping today. Um, planting the iris, the irises, the native irises. And also heading out to my mate Dale's farm today to pick up some beautiful timber. For a beautiful park bench I was given the other day by my mate Ryan and his mum uh, Janet. I'll show you the chair. It's 
nice fig some growing. These are the native orises I'm planting today. That's the iris flower. And this is a beautiful park bench I'm heading out to Dales to get. It's a nice piece of wood for this uh, old park bench I'm going to restore. And this is the type of wood. So I actually gave Dale a heap of this wood. What I found out, the Nibing rubbish dump not oh, a couple of years ago. So he's going to give me about, I need 12 lengths of this wood here. So it's perfect for this chair, exactly the same type of wood for the old park bench. And I'll bring it up like uh, brand new again, guys. All right, fellas, thanks for watching. That's it, feeding my bobtails and the snail farm. And we'll give you a tour of my garden in the next uh, few days for you on Saturday. So I'm just carting a bit of sand today, everyone, for this area right here. Just for um, when it rains, this area kind of all floods, so I need to fill in the holes. And I've done the same for my yard here. And it looks beautiful, just nice and natural. I don't grow any lawn or nothing like that. I used to a long time ago. I got rid of all my lawn. Um, so I like to keep it nice and natural with the, the yellow sand. And uh, I just threw a bobtail, guys. So here's one here. This is friendly on this one. He should come to me, this one, maybe. Here he comes, look. It's a beautiful bobtail, this one. I think it's a female one. This is female, this one. So like I say, fellas, about once a week I'll feed them. Not bananas other types of food as well special bobtail food that I make and uh, there's plenty of insects vegetation dead mice that my cats kill uh, everything and they survive really well in my yard and they're nice and safe from cars and trucks and they should live for probably another 20 or 30 years if not longer they can live up to 70 years the bobtail lizard all right, thanks for watching everyone. We'll get going. Another beautiful day, 30 degrees Celsius. Got to let, get this landscaping done, guys, so I can let my beautiful magpie nipper out for the day. He wanders my yard. Nipper the magpie. He's about four or five years old. He's a, another rescue bird. His mum and dad got killed by a car. So, all right. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll chat soon, see you Nipper, see ya. Wanders my yard every single day guys, he lives a good life. Alright, we'll keep going everyone, Bob tells had his food, there he goes, see ya.